Now, when you first dive into Google Workspace, it can feel a little intimidating, a little bit involved, but I'm gonna walk you through everything that you need to know to get the most out of your Google Workspace account. Let's jump in. So if you don't have an account yet, first you wanna head over to workspace.google.com and click up here to get started. Now it's gonna ask you a few questions about your business. And the thing to keep in mind is that Google Workspace really is designed for businesses. It has a lot of the same tools that you have with your personal Gmail or Google account. It has Gmail, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Calendar, Drive, all those sorts of things, in addition to some extra benefits for a business. And that's primarily what I'm gonna focus on in this video. And one of the big advantages of the Google Workspace, which formerly was known as G Suite, is that you can create accounts or email addresses as your business name. So you can have your name at yourbusiness.com rather than at Gmail. So it looks a little bit more professional and it keeps all of your team with similar email accounts. But as you walk through this, I'll just do a little bit of this in the United States. You go to next, you're gonna add your name. I'm just doing this for example, Bob Smith, and your current email address. This would be your current Gmail address that you want to get this set up with. Now, in my case, I already have an account with that, so it is going to have me sign in. But if you just continue to follow the prompts on the screen, it'll set up your account. So I'm just gonna sign into my current account here. It's gonna first take you to this recommended page and it's gonna show you some different tips and tricks and things that are available in the Google Workspace account. But we're gonna look at your tabs here. So you'll see these apps on your screen here. And again, if you have a Gmail account or a Google sign-on of any sort, you may already be familiar with these, but they have Calendar, Docs, which is their, their version of Word, the drives where you can store things, you know, you can create forms, they have Gmail, chat, all of these kind of tools in here. And we'll, we'll work through a couple of these. They'll work very similar to what you're used to on a private account to the business account. But again, with the paid Google Workspace account, it gives you some extra benefits for your business. Now, first of all, if you are the owner of the business and you're setting this up for the first time, you're gonna be the admin of that. So I wanna go over some of the admin features that are available to you. So if you just click on the little grid up here, go to admin and it will sign you into your admin account. And this is where you'll manage everything on the back end of how it's set up. So first and foremost would be your users. So you can manage that by adding the members of your team. And so this would be, you know, depending on how big your team is, you could give everybody on your, your team their own unique email and sign on, which is the important part to be able to use your workspace features. Depending on how many employees you need, will dictate how many users or sign-ons that you need to create. And you'll just click up here to add new user. It'll ask you for their name and their current email address. It'll give them a temporary password and then they set up the rest of it from here. You can also do things if somebody forgets their password, you can reset it here. You can rename them if you have an employee leave and you want to give that account to somebody else, that sort of thing. But this is kind of the backbone of, of who you have using your account. And this will be key when we talk about some of the features with the Google Drive, which I'll talk about here. Uh, we also have groups. So group emails are basically you could share an email account. So maybe you want admin or payroll or sales or something like that, that multiple people in your business need access to. So if somebody emails, let's say info at your business name, it'll go to multiple people and you can select who is in that group. And you can have unlimited email groups in this so that, you know, if, especially with small companies, you have people wearing multiple hats. That way you don't have to always have your personal email or their personal email out there. You could have some sort of generic sort of buckets that your email accounts go into. One other thing I wanna mention about the users is in addition to having the groups that go to multiple people, you can also set up aliases under individual emails. So I'll just go into mine here. You can go add alternate emails. And this could be where you could add maybe different names. And again, this would still go to your email box, but if somebody emails info, it could just go to you rather than a group of people. And so again, you can create multiple aliases or alternate emails within one user. Now, and again, on the dashboard page here, you can manage your billing, you can link other domains. So if you have multiple companies that use multiple domains, or you just want one account for multiple businesses, you can set that up here, you know, additional security features. So this is sort of your main hub 
as the admin to be able to help control everything that you need to be in charge of there. I think one of the other big advantages of using a Google Workspace account is how their Google Drive is set up. So we're gonna go up here again and we're gonna go to Drive. So one of the important distinctions between the Google Workspace and a private Google account is with the private account on the Drive side, you'll pay for a certain amount of storage that you need. And every time you upload files, it'll use up that storage and you can share those links just like Dropbox, those sorts of things. But if you send somebody a link to a folder and you say, hey, upload your own document into this or upload your own picture or file or whatever that is, that person maintains ownership of that file. So in the business world, if you're saying, hey, I need this document added to this folder and they add that, they have ownership. And if they delete that file or they change it, you have no control over that. In addition to that, if they're larger files, like let's say videos or photos that you're having people upload into those drives, that uses up their storage. So if you have a client, say, that you want to upload video files for, you know, every time they upload a video, they retain ownership, they can delete those at any point, and they have retained full access to that. And for you, you have no control over whether they delete it or not, and if they delete it, it's gone, that sort of thing. With the Google Workspace, you maintain the ownership. So you pay for a certain amount of storage that you want to have in there. And then when you share that folder with somebody or that drive, then when they upload it, they're uploading it to your account. So you have full control over it and you have the ability to delete that and they will not, okay? So what you'll do is you'll go into shared drives. These are the ones that you want everybody to have access to in your company or outside of that. And you click up here and I'm just gonna do a test and we'll click create and it's working on that. And then you can manage the members of that. So you can add people that are within your company or outside of your company to have access to those account. So you can share that with anybody. And then that way, again, anytime they upload something into that drive, it's using your storage and not theirs. And the nice thing too, is now you have a little bit of a better control of not just having links to all these different folders and files all over the place, but you have access to certain drives. So let's say you have, you know, an admin drive and it has all your business organization paperwork and invoices and all that sort of thing. You could have that just shared with the people that in your company that manage bookkeeping, that manage payroll and that sort of thing and not have it accessible to everybody in there. Now, the other powerful tool in the Google Workspace ecosystem is to be able to share documents among your team. So you can create the shared document. And again, if you just place this in that shared folder that your team has access to, then they have full access, whatever those shared permissions are. So you could have multiple documents that, you know, this could be business ideas and anybody that's in that shared drive can now have access to that and they can edit these in, in live form. They can go in there and make suggestions or add or edit the documents as needed. And it because it's stored on the cloud, it's updated automatically. So you always have the current version. It works for the spreadsheets. It works for the Google Docs. Everything can be used as a shared document, which is really powerful. Now we're just gonna head back to your apps and I wanna show you another element that's really sort of powerful. It's kind of two things. There's Google Meet and there's Google Chat. So this is set up very much like Zoom or anything like that where you can conference in and have a video conference with people on your team that have that account. So you can just create a new meeting and you could schedule it for later, you could start a meeting instantly, or you can schedule it in your Google Calendar, which again, now that you have all your users under one domain, you can create a calendar event. Maybe you have a weekly stand-up meeting and on Fridays at noon that you can send that out and it's always recurring on their schedule. They click on it and they're right into this Google Meet. You don't have to leave Google from your email to be able to check that. It's all within there. It's not an additional link or password that you need to use through Zoom. So that's a great feature. Then you can see a history of your calls. And if you set it up to record the calls, it'll send it over to your Google Drive automatically. So that's really nice. All right, and similarly, you have Google Chat. This is very similar to Slack or WhatsApp or any of those features 
where you can have an ongoing thread of information. You can start a new chat. You can create a space where you have multiple people in there, like a channel on Slack. You can browse different spaces if you have them already set up on there. You can direct message somebody. You can mention other people in the team. So this is, again, a really powerful tool to sort of replace Slack or use in tandem to Slack that you can have all your communication with your team in one place and everything sort of connects together. So those are a couple of the key features in Google Workspace unique from the individual user. And I think they really helped elevate your business and make everything kind of streamlined and in one place. I hope this helped you out to get started with Google Workspace. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.